All right, with all the mental health disorders that exist now, and it, you know, it's all over the news, right? We hear about it every day, tragic events happening. It's more important than ever to catch a mental condition early in a child's life. And many of you don't know that the first five years are the most crucial for diagnosing a problem. Now we've got Dr. Pradeep Gidwani, here from the American Academy of Pediatrics and he'll show us how to make sure that our children are where they should be in the terms of physical and emotional health. Welcome to prime time. Thank you. Okay, so you know, we, we hear about these shootings and, and these horrible things that are happening across the country and then at the root of it, it seems like there was a mental health disorder. And that's the part that's so interesting. We're yeah. getting a lot more attention on the issues around mental health, which is very helpful. But we really have to look early on, very early in a child's life, 90% of their brain develops by the age five. So what's happening in terms of those early relationships are mm. critical to create a foundation for a child's well-being and later mental health. So let me ask you this, these uh, like bi being bipolar, because I know a lot of mm -hmm. the shootings, they, had, they were bipolar, but then they had some kind of psychosis with it. Right. Um, I thought it was like hereditary, or maybe there's a trigger that happens and, and it kicks off something that they already had the genetic, the gene for it. Well, what's really very interesting about mm -hmm. that is, is that your early environment, your early relationships make a difference on how your genes are expressed. We can actually make a difference in how healthy people are by how we interact with them early in life. Incredible. So, it, you know, tell us what this means. Well, what this means is, is in San Diego, we're very lucky. We just released this report, which mm -hmm. is about the early childhood mental health talking about some of the things we can do, some of the things that we need to do. Parent mental health is an important component of it. Educating parents so they know what they can do to help their children develop socially and emotionally. And that leads to behavior and that leads to mental health. And again, that nurturing, warm relationships make a huge difference. And First Five of San Diego yes. is funding many services as well as this report. And they really have been a leader in the country when it comes to delivering services for kids in so the early nurturing. Years. Absolutely. A very nurturing environment, a very peaceful, happy environment. Absolutely. Help with mental st stability. Yeah, I had read a while ago if a child's brought into a very stressful environment, mm -hmm. how it wreaks havoc later on in life as well. Yeah, we call that toxic stress. So when children are in an environment mm -hmm. where there's that toxic stress, their system is always geared up. So they're always looking for problems. They always and they feel create threatened. it, right? They recreate Absolutely. it because that's their norm. <clears throat> that's what they know. Mm -hmm. And so as you know, um, with children, there's just so much that goes on in those early years. And we used to not know as much as we do now mm -hmm. about the early brain development. And this whole piece about how the genetics and how what genes are expressed really has a lot to do with everything from diet to relationships to all these different pieces. Well, let's talk about, we said nurture, let's talk about diet. What I mean, my, I feed my kids healthy. I try to do all organic. Yes. Um, do, would pesticides and preservatives mm -hmm. play a role? Tell us how that works. Absolutely, we, we don't know all the details. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a national children's study going on today, which is helping us to look at that. But I think common sense would tell us if a bug isn't gonna eat it, why should we? <laughs> Good point, <laughs> right? So when you think of something like milk, um, mm -hmm. We all drink milk, and I think you mentioned you have four daughters. Yeah. Well, with four daughters, it's really important to make sure that you're not, uh, you're, you are getting the organic milk that doesn't have hormones. Right. Puberty's gone down to an earlier age. So these are things that we need to be aware of, those pieces about all of the factors that come back. But we always like to come back to the relationships, and the relationships matter. We can feed yeah. our kids well, but we need to love our kids. We need to hug first and ask questions later. Yeah, you know what? Uh, and be present with them. Because I work. Absolutely. I have two girls. I work. So when I come home, and I, I don't care. Sometimes I, I sleep with my girls a lot. I have them like this. Yeah. And we cuddle and touch and affection. And they're always hugging me and kissing Absolutely. me. And I'm, I'm okay with that. It's good. Well, it's actually great for them. Yeah. Touch and those kinds of contacts that yeah. we need really actually helps soothe the yeah. system. Yeah. It calms the nervous system down. And this is really what we're looking at. First Five does a lot when it comes to what are the services for early development and early behavior that help kids then be successful later in life. Mm -hmm. Now you do that and you feel good about it. The great part about it is your kids feel good mm -hmm. about it and their chances of being successful and being willing to take chances and go out there is greater because they have a mom that loves and supports them. That's the 
the piece that children need. They need the support and that strength that you get. So I should feel good about that. My daughter she graduated law school and she just told me she's moving to Denver. <laughs> well, I think, I think <laughs> she's any She's secure. Parent. She's happy. <laughs> okay, so, so the little one still need the mom. But let's right. go back to the red flags. So important, mm -hmm. folks, to just catch these red flags early on to get help. What is that? What do these red flags look like? You know, it's, it's when, again, when a child is a baby, we're looking for things that are a lot more subtle. Are they crying a lot? Are they difficult to console? We talk about college, we talk about these things, but there's kids who have a little bit more where they need Okay, we need to talk soothing. about that because I've had different personality types. I Absolutely. had the criers and I had the calm. <laughs> I've had about everything before. But we're gonna take a quick break and it's really important that you stick around. We need to know these red flags and if it's not for your own children, maybe it's your grandchildren, maybe it's someone else's children that you love. Stick around, this is news you can use. And there are red flags that we need to look out for and you're going to tell us what those are. Well, some of those things are red flags for the child and there's some red flags for parents as well. Okay. So with the children, when you're very little, not gaining weight, being behind on your developmental um, growth, um, impulsive behavior, fears, problems sleeping. What about temper tantrums? You see the kid in the, in the grocery store screaming on, and if my kid ever did that, I'd just kind of walk away and not and enable the down. attention. Yeah. And then they would come, <laughs> come, they'd calm down, then I'd hug them and have them discuss. Right. But, you, but, but you still see that. It almost seems like it's a, a normal thing for kids to have temper tantrums. It is common, and we never know what's happening with yeah. the child. So with a temper tantrum, there's normal ones, and then there's ones that are longer. Those longer ones are when we get a little bit more And concerned. what would that, what, what is a longer one? 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes. Okay. I mean, something like when you're, when you're, when you, most temper tantrums are about three to five minutes, and if you don't give them attention, it goes away. But the red flags that we actually need to look for in parents are things like depression, anxiety. These conditions um, influence how present you can be with your child, and we were talking about how important it is to be present mm -hmm. with your child. So a parent's mental health, if they're not responding to their child, the child will stop trying to engage, and it's those engagements. And they learn that behavior from they the do. parents. They do. And then they mirror, mirror it. They do, and then also they'll give up. Mm -hmm. And when a child gives up because their needs aren't being met, because when they engage you, they don't get a response, they quit. Mm -hmm. And if you're someone who quits, we know in life you'll have challenges. Mm -hmm. It's the person who doesn't quit who's successful in life. What other red flags are there? Well, as we get older, then we start seeing kids who have the inability to sit, the inability to pay attention. So when you see things like that, we normally think, oh, well, this happened or that happened. But if a child can't regulate their emotions, if they can't sit and pay attention, they're not going to be able to learn. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we need to make sure the kids are getting enough activity so it's not an issue of them having too much energy and not having a place to let mm -hmm. go of that energy, which they should do. Yeah, not Exercise enough parents and turn their kids out. And I, and I say that meaning... Right exercise you know now the kids use uh you know video games right, as a right. babysitter and it irritates me the kids especially boys right. need exercise they and girls do. do too but they need to <clears throat> release that energy they do need to release mm -hmm. that energy and so those red flags then are that child who can't pay attention the child who's not able then we look and we walk back in their history and we see earlier in their life they may not have had that strong relationship with a parent mm -hmm. that makes the child feel secure so you're looking for the quality of their relationships mm -hmm actually the quality of their speech, the quality of their words, the quality of how they think. All of this is influence. So you're looking for subtle pieces. It's not quite as big as later in life where the red flags that mm. we look for for those kids that we think might do something like Or big the personality influxes like moods. Switches, yeah. moods, swings. These are important. And again, the older the kid gets, the more there is. The younger the child is, the more subtle it is. So mm. those red flags are things like their physical growth, some of those really little pieces mm -hmm. um, that if you are concerned, it's great to talk to your pediatrician and to others who have that understanding. Mm -hmm. So if you are Just suspicious, it. bring it up. Yeah, intercept it. One other thing, just real quick, what about sure. a child who's an extrovert to an introvert, a child who suppresses their feelings? I would think that would not be healthy. Any child who has a big change like that, that's important. There's also kids who, when they get angry, their energy goes outwards and there's some that go inwards. The kids whose energy goes inwards will be depressed, anxious, withdrawn. When you see those kinds of behaviors, they're a little harder to, to track, mm -hmm. but they're just as important. So as a parent, it's important to sit down and get them to figure out how to verbalize their feelings. Their feelings. Absolutely. Yeah, I even I have a daughter like that, so I have her draw pictures, and Absolutely. I worked with her for years drawing pictures, and now she talks to me about her feelings and everything that goes on in school. She went from a child who would never tell me anything mm -hmm. was wrong to now she talks to me. And again, the key thing mm -hmm. there is your level of engagement and mm -hmm. your creativity. The other piece that's so nice about that is 
writing yeah. allows them to tell the story in an easier way. You want to talk to your kids, you want to tell stories. Mm -hmm. Read to them at bedtime. If you're checking in with them every night before they go to bed, reading to them, what you find is you find out what's happening in the day. You do, and, and they, they that, want to tell you. Because <laughs> yeah. if you ask them right when they get out of school, they're like nothing, oh, nothing, right? And they don't want to talk about it. it takes some time to decompose. Right. It's kind of decompress. I'm sorry, and and then figure out, you know, what they want to verbalize. And you said your each of your each of your children are very different from one mm -hmm. another. Some will tell you everything right away. Another yeah. one, you have to draw it out. The important part as a parent is t treating each child individually and taking that time and paying attention like you you have with your kids mm -hmm. to really find out what works best for them when we look at the report that we have we're looking for services for parents and for kids and you know at the American Academy of Pediatrics we're looking at the well-being of the whole child their physical mental and emotional well-being because we want them to be productive yeah. in society and when a parent can really engage with their child see their child as an individual and draw out their best, yeah. that's a lucky child. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on you. Primetime. Great tips for us, for all of us parents and, for, and children. They're our future. We need to love them, take care of them, and make sure they have great futures.